Here then are the keys to handling any kind of adversity. Number one, accept that the adversity has occurred. Here you see this cartoon character will be familiar, meep meep, the road runner, and you know he goes off the cliff and it's only when he looks down that he falls. Now in the real world, you're gonna fall the minute you go down the cliff. And you might as well realize you're off the cliff because then you've at least got a chance of catching the ledge before you fall. Accept. Joan Didion in her wonderful book, the Year, of, oh, the Year of Magical Thinking, had a hard time really believing that her husband was dead. She said she saw the, the shoes in the closet and she said she better not get rid of them because if he came back, maybe he'd need them. So I think we all have trouble accepting that bad things have happened. But until we accept it, we really can't fully process it. Analyze the situation, including your contribution. All right, so this is one of my favorite um, painters, uh, Hieronymus Bosch. Um, he's got a very macabre uh, sensibility, and this painting is, is appropriately called Death Apocalypse. And what you can see is all kinds of awful things going on here, and if you look, down there, there's like a coffin with a mummy and all kinds of terrible stuff, and I've imposed a Google map on it. And let's say you were there, you might say, hey, listen, I'd better go to the high ground because, you know, bad stuff is happening there and so on and so forth. But getting away from such an abstruse example to one that's closer to home, these were the headlines in the 1987 stock market crash, October 87. You see... Um, even uh, the Chicago Sun-Times good newspapers were reporting the sort of chaotic feeling of this huge crash at the time. But if you look at the Dow Jones, it's almost hard to really see where did that crash occur. I think it's this little blip over there. So you can see that if somebody were to have analyzed things correctly, they would have recognized it was a buying opportunity. But other people could have sold everything right there and missed out on the whole upside. Now, without saying how anybody could have known one way or another, the point that I'm making is that a proper analysis of a difficult situation or even catastrophic situation can lead you to the right conclusion, which means don't panic. Analyze the situation. And that's going to... Don't, don't lose your enormous cognitive abilities, the neocortex, that's the crowning jewel of human evolutionary accomplishment, don't lose that because that's going to be a key to handling any sort of adversity. Calibrate your response in proportion to the adversity. We've all seen examples of people who overreact. If you've got a, a mouse, <laughs> don't use an AK-47. Try a mouse trap instead. Regulate your emotions and stabilize your physiology. Hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Who in the audience has heard those four adjectives used side by side? A couple of people. It is classic for, for anybody who has any exposure to 12-step work, which comes out of the tradition of um, addiction. However, it's universally helpful that these are human emotions that can trigger bad, irrational decisions. If you're hungry, eat. If you're angry, settle your anger down. If you're lonely, call a friend. And if you're tired, take a nap. Don't scream at your wife, uh, curse out the person in the traffic, um, go get a hooker. Um, <laughs> Snort a line of coke. Not good solution. Regulate, regulate your emotions, okay? Thought I'd better bring the audience to life over there. Okay, so now how do you stabilize your physiology? These are tried and true ways. So listen, they're, they're five simple points, but they're all important. Strengthen your circadian rhythms. 
Light in the morning activates you. Darkness in the evening settles you down. Important daily rhythms. You know, when adversity comes, people tend to stay up late. They tend to sleep in late. They let their rhythms go awry, and that's not good for them. Sleep. Sleep is really crucial. Uh, and we now have learned that when we sleep, or at least when rats sleep, the cells in the brain spread apart and the cere cerebrospinal fluid washes out the waste of the previous day. Reg eat regular meals, keep your blood glucose steady, exercise, and finally, what Ray mentioned, I can endorse 100%, meditation, it, I, it keeps surprising me, and I'll talk more about it in a subsequent slide, how amazing it is as a stabilizer. Cultivate good habits, habit, very, you know, it's, it's historically been uh, not a good word, but it's a wonderful word. I was walking down Central Park West and I saw the homily on the church uh, bulletin board and it was Annie Dillard who said, how we spend our days is of course how we spend our lives. It sort of hit me like a shock. Yes, we think of this great plan of our life, but really it's the sum of our days that really creates the fabric of our lives. So what we do today and tomorrow and the next day is very, very important. And when you create a habit, you make something automatic and you make your life easier. So the creation of good habits becomes a very important way of regulating yourself, especially when things go wrong. Well, here is my infographic, a new word I learned, on TM with all the advantages on blood pressure, on um, effectiveness, on reducing anger, on stress management and prevention, on addiction, um, on improved self-esteem. And this piece is very, very important for all of us. It improves self-actualization. That part of ourselves that is our best self that we all strive for after we've met all our basic needs, this is Abraham Maslow's wonderful concept of his hierarchy of needs. After we've fed ourselves and we've got safety and we've got shelter and we've got love and we've got all the basic things, we still have that last tip of the pyramid. How do we fulfill that piece of ourselves that is the very best we have to offer? And TM is one of the greatest assets in that regard, or meditation in general, but that's the kind that I do and I know uh, Ray does as well. Reach out for help. Sometimes, especially if we've messed up, like the guy who was driving with the Bluetooth, if we've done something really stupid, really shameful, sometimes we try and fix it by ourselves. Not a good idea. Suck it up, face your shame, Face your blame, but get the help you need to get out of your trouble. Tell a story. Use that incredibly powerful left brain in most people. It's the left brain, analytical, verbal, to sort out what's going on in the emotional parts of the brain. Friend and colleague James Pennybaker has written about this. And truly, the research behind his writing exercise, which incidentally he has allowed me to reproduce in The Gift of Adversity. The research behind it is staggering. And I could give you endless examples, but I won't because time is short. But it's a wonderful thing. Four 20-minute sessions of writing about your deep feelings and thoughts. Four sessions of 20 minutes. 80 minutes total over a week or 10 days can do such things as improving your immune functioning, improving your chance of being rehired after being fired, and on and on and on. So really astonishing piece discovery.